Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to this week's uh, Kubvert community meeting. I'm your host, Chris Caligari, and uh, this is your chance to talk about um, how you use Kubvert, um, talk with uh, our core developers, and uh, just uh, talk about how, uh, how things are going for you. Um, let me post the meeting notes to um, to chat. Okay, meeting notes are posted to chat. If you could please fill in your attendance. Um, we appreciate that. We do track that information. Um, go ahead and fill out any agenda items that you'd like to speak about today. Um, and while everybody is doing that, um, do we have any, uh, any new uh, folks with us today that would uh, like to introduce themselves? Um, hi, I'm Philip. I'm uh, I'm developing some some networking uh, for Pantone Technologies, and I uh, want to dis discuss some stuff from out uh, PRs uh, regarding regarding BHOST support. Hi, welcome to our meeting. Welcome to Kubert. Thank you. Hi. Uh, anybody else? Let's see. Okay. I would like to talk about CSI also. Remember, <laughs> Andre. I thought I put you down for the first agenda topic, Andre. You have cluster CSI. Uh, just one second. Uh, how chat window, chat window here. Oh, do you need a screen share? On, on Kubernetes, this CSI driver behind the scenes as our PVC. Got it. Okay, I think uh, Andre and I spoke uh, earlier and um, it looks like he's trying to use, uh, he's trying to connect Kubert with Gloucester uh, using the CSI driver. Correct. And, and he'd, uh, he'd like to know uh, uh, best practices on how to make that happen. It should just work. I mean, once you have cluster installed and you have dynamic provisioning of PVCs, like PVs for PVCs, then all the standard like workflows, data volume, template workflows for virtual machines, for example, uh, should naturally work. Uh, what, um, is there like a specific question about this? Um, with the interaction between Qvert and any storage provider yes. or? Uh -huh. Yes, because we plan to use a solution called video on top of, of cluster to have the duplication. And since like we're gonna have a, a, we create a pool of windows, they always gonna be the same. And we plan to use less storage because we have cluster plus VGO for the duplication. 
Let me grab it, the video link that explains uh, what I plan to achieve. Just one second. Uh, we plan to reach several, uh, like 80, 85 percent of, of the duplication of the VMs with cluster plus VGO. And I, I don't know exactly if this already <laughs> anyone try that or can give us some roadmap. <laughs> how to make it happen. I guess we're now checking this last two, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just swamped uh, slideshare.net. Oh, wait. It's uh, on the uh, slide. Let me grab it. What is the exact slide number? Yeah, I, I wish uh, I could talk to about cluster. <laughs> what I we can. plan to, to have. <laughs> Okay, 80% 80, 80 85% of uh, reduction because we are doing virtual desktops. Mm -hmm. So it looks to me like this is an is this a native cluster feature or is no, this based on cluster? It's cluster and then you you implement VGO on top of cluster to do the the duplication. Mm -hmm. You understand? Okay, so but not the cluster VD, the does the cluster CSI plugin support this already or? Uh, it supports this already, the cluster, but how to put kubevert using that. <laughs> so yeah, like David said before, if, the, uh, if this is just the CSI plugin and the result of the block device, which the CSI plugin gives out is using video and cluster, mm -hmm. then you can just use the block device and Qbert would not be involved anymore. Okay. So but we, we, we basic, Qbert basically just takes... That? Pardon? Someone else uh, are using that or only us? That's the question. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it seems like no one in the audience, but... Yeah. <laughs> but if you, someone else know about, we would like to talk. Yeah, then we have the Qbert dev mailing list. Maybe you can post a question there or ask in Slack. Yes. Or do, do we have anyone from storage on uh, today? Uh, yeah, I'm here, but I don't, I don't know anything about this cluster and BDO though. Okay. <laughs> any 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 comments? It's welcome. Okay, not not today, but later on. Okay. Andre, how come you chose a uh, uh, cluster versus Seth? Uh, because we know cluster and VGO on regular uh, overt deployment that we was using before uh, implement convert behind overt uh, was working perfectly. We just introduce instead of using overt, uh, uh, let's say cluster, we use covert instead of of, uh, uh, of overt cluster, and then we can reach one thousand five hundred, <laughs> fifteen hundred uh, nodes on the same cluster instead of sixty four. Uh, understood. Um, yeah, um, reason I ask is uh, 
uh, if uh, if you start purchasing support through Red Hat, um, their uh, the the cluster storage uh, has gone the soft direction. Um, Ma Michael, maybe you can you can talk about what what's happening with the uh, cluster versus Ceph. You know, that's been a, a hot, hot topic yeah, for years if you now. Can help me on that. We can change because nobody needs to know what we are using behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah, and I, I believe Ceph has a, a deduplication as well as a, a, oh, oh my gosh, I've been can, up so can early, you send I can't a think link of it. Of Ceph, uh, yeah, um, it's it's basically Rook. Um, oh, Rook, so, Rook, yeah, I know that. and then and then Rook uh, interfaces with the Ceph cluster. Rook, I know, okay. but uh, which Air, one? Uh, erasure yeah. coding. Sorry. Uh, so you're gonna get uh, you're gonna get space space savings with uh, with Ceph um, using erasure coding and and deduplication. So it's it's uh, space savings at different layers of the of the stack. Uh, uh, so Can you point me to where is the information about the, du the duplication? Yeah. Would you mind if I uh, if I follow it up with that? No with problem. Bullet no points problem after the community meeting. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Not a not a problem. Uh, it's it's just uh, Gluster is uh, it's what uh, seventeen year old technology now, and uh, they've tried to they've tried to. Um, Keep it, keep a community. Yeah, uh, that's why we are here. Community <laughs> momentum and, <laughs> but uh, that's why we we are here. <laughs> on the community. What is the best practice for don't don't screw the project in the middle? Yeah, of it's it's, it's <laughs> storage. Is, uh, uh, cluster storage has definitely gone the the rook and sap direction. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's uh it took over OpenStack. It's taken over Kubernetes and. Mm -hmm. and, and just general cluster storage. Uh, I can fill out some uh, some bullet points for you after, and uh, maybe that can uh, help you uh, move away from cluster. Hopefully, you don't have a massive data migration that would no. We, go along we with just that. <laughs> <VMs. laughs> okay, there okay. is no migration. <laughs> it's just good, the best to way to reach the best performance. Yeah, we we heard uh, about petabytes of data having to move from Gluster to Ceph, and it's just like you cover your eyes and <laughs> forget about uh, a week later or a month later. Everything yeah, <laughs> all pipes are uh, are moving data at one hundred percent. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you so much. I hope to hear from you guys soon. Okay. Uh-oh, Roman, go ahead and talk about that. Yeah, Tui, I'm not sure if Tui is on the call also, discovered that upgrading from 046 to 047 is broken due to a, a PR change. Um, it's not clear to me why our end-to-end -end tests did not catch this. But we have a revert of this PR open, and as soon as it is in, we will do another 047 release. And I'll, let me just also post the revert PR. Does this and mean we cannot upgrade to 47 or? Yeah, and now thinking about it, it was just discovered today. Okay. So there's nothing yet on the mailing list, but. Now thinking about it, this probably also means it's bad if people get to 047 already, because then they have potentially problems updating from there because of the change. Um, I wonder, maybe also they maybe we should remove the release or something or 
Anyway, uh, let me know what you decide to do because I've advertised the 47 release <laughs> on the email list and Twitter. And <laughs> this has been a bad week. <laughs> You can always do a 0.47.1, you know? Yeah, yeah. The, 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 definitely. The issue is just if people install 0.47.0 now, the, we would fix, uh, at least right now, what we have in the revert would we'll fix zero the code, and you can go from 0.46 to 0.47.1, to 0, 0 but not from 0.47.0 to 0.47.1. So we probably have to improve the fix. But 0 0.47, but 0 is, yeah, we, we cannot really fix it since it's already released. Yeah, maybe we should kind of roll it back or something. Yeah, anyway, just that you are informed. Jeez. Well, let's make sure we don't abandon anybody that's uh, already gone into 470. Or yeah, let's, let's make sure that we have a good uh, escape plan for them. Yeah, we can do that. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, anything else for the agenda? Uh, may I uh, add up something about uh, the Zen hypervisor support uh, topic? Is that Michael talking? Ah, uh, yes, yes, uh, Michael. Um, gotcha. All right, let me fill you in here. Uh, some weeks ago, we presented a idea about the Zen hypervisor support. Uh, support uh, supporting and after that uh, we collected uh, some questions and uh, <clears throat> recently we are addressing that. Uh, we made uh, some progress in the networking issue. Now we managed to uh, make the network in Zen VM work in bridging mode and it will be described in the design proposal, we can discuss the detail then. And another critical issue is in Kubelite. Uh, it's the resource problem. Now we haven't figured out um, a solution. It looks a bit um, troublesome. Kubelite uh, running in BOM0 cannot see the real resources that uh, will be allocated to VMs. Uh, Kubelite uh, uses see a advisor to check cap capacity. See a advisor obtained uh, information from system files. For example, the memory data is from slash precise uh, slash memory a uh, mem info file. And um, I didn't find any way that uh, in Kubelite we can intercede or extend to change this mechanism what we need, what we want to do is checking the real resources by calling some Zen tools command like XL info. Uh, it would be ideal if something like uh, hooks can be added, but uh, no, I, I didn't find uh, we can do that um, in Kubelite. Uh, besides that, uh, we began to look into virtual Kubelite. According to its document, uh, it's a Kubelite uh, alternative that can be customized, uh, including resources. But now I'm not familiar, not, not very familiar with that. I'm not uh, sure whether it can work with Kubevert and the result of our problem. As the Kubelite uh, issue is still very important, uh, so we plan to submit our design proposal once we get a workable idea on the Kubelite issue. Uh, so a question uh, today from me is that, um, uh, do anybody know about 
know more about uh, Kubernetes. Is there any is there any way we can customize or modify something for the resource checking? As far as I know, the only uh, API which the Kubelet offers for that, if you really talk about the Kubelet, is the container runtime interface API. So what? Uh, container runtime. But even, yeah. but even there, I'm not sure regarding, yeah, that should be completely flexible. In principle. Yeah. So how about uh, what do you Kubelet? Do, 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 do anybody have experience in using that? Is that the, can it resolve the problem we were facing? So okay. there are no, we can, we the, the virtual Kubelet is in general used so that you can, for instance, create uh, at least the idea behind it is that you can, for instance, create pods on, uh, on GCS or Amazon Cloud or whatever, and they are not really pods. It's like, just like you report them like pods, but they probably just represent an arbitrary application uh, yes, managed somehow. Some but cloud. Yeah. yeah. Yes, please. But um, but what what you what you definitely lose in principle when you're using the virtual kubelet is that. There is any existing pod implementation for there for you already, right? And if Qvert would want to use it, or, or if you would want to use it with Zen, you would probably also have to implement something like a virtual Vert handler. <laughs> so virtual Qvert uh, yeah. to Vert handler, so yeah, that this they, could work they, together. Yeah, they made that uh, provider. I think we need to implement our own uh, some, some something. As the backhand. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll continue to look into that um, uh, for, for more detail and check. And I think another question is that uh, whether the virtual Kubelite can work with uh, Kubelite. We, 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 yeah, no, not, we not out of the box, definitely not. So no. uh, because okay. because uh, Qbert has the strict assumption that uh, there is a container runtime implementation running below mm -hmm. Qbert uh, below Q, be, be, below the Kubelet like Docker or Cryo or any other one, and that they are namespace and C group based. So from the kernel mechanism perspective, if they are not namespace and C group based, Qbert does not work on it. So. Uh -huh. If the virtual kubelet would be used, our whole node daemon would have to know about this and have to work with this assumption. Oh, that's a, that's a bad news. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, the whole kubelet, the, the whole kubelet project is built around the core assumption that there is, at least on the node, that there is a container random implementation like Docker or Cryo present. Okay, I see. Thank you. Then we are uh, still uh, need to consider our solution and try everything for a while. Well, <laughs> what if I may ask you a question? Yeah. What I did not understand yet is, are you? looking into send because you for Kubelet because you want to run send based applications for development and verification on Kubert or do you really want to use a Kubernetes cluster and Kubert to run send hypervised applications on production systems yeah in in our uh, software stack uh, then is something mandatory. We are we are on it. We are, we are based on it. So if we want to mix our workload uh, uh, between container and uh, VM, the the hypervisor part, it must be then. So okay. So then, but, so, then, so the then. target system can run Zen and Kubernetes, and you're looking for a way to combine it, basically. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. 
Okay, so, so, so more than just the development and testing case. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. So then it's something mandatory for us, and we so that's why we insist exploring uh, the possibility to support Zen in Kubernetes. Okay, okay, makes sense. Okay, that's all from me, and uh, we'll we will continue to check and uh, update um, in every meeting. I think recently. Yeah, thank you for the update. Thank you, Michael. Okay, anything else for the official agenda? Um, there's an item in open floor. Uh, about shortage of approvers. Um, whoever wrote that, would you like to talk about that? I don't really have anything to add except what it said. It would be nice to have more approvers. We appear to have a process where we need to have someone as yeah. listed as a code review for a while. This might be a little bit heavy weight. We um, are hiring people here in, at the desk to, to, that can work on that. Can we talk after this meeting? I assume it's not about the approvals, right? We, we, we have several people working on, on convert uh, code right now, and they can, uh, we can point them to also become approvers in this community. So um, I think there are in principle the project differentiates between code reviews and approvers. So I'm happy if if anyone wants to become code reviewer, they basically can just start right away. Hmm. Um, if you are, um, we have, uh, and I think, yeah, um, that that uh, sorry. That Chris is already, yeah, Chris is already opening the guides on how to become a member of the community and how to become an approver. So code review, anyone can code review. It's just GitHub, right? But you can become a member when you did some good code reviews and contributions over time and you get two sponsors. That's what Chris just said open. And when you then also show that you managed to do more complex features end to end, uh, we're able to help other people sorting out how to design things properly. And you can be trusted to not screw up the project from an architectural perspective, and then you can also become an approver. But that's quite hard at the moment. And we have right now a little bit of a, okay, of a gap I'm there. Read it and, and, and talk about uh, with my team, OK? Uh... But definitely just start. Engaging, no, nothing is stopping that. That's great if you do that. Uh, member DG. Da, 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 da. And for Derek directly, when we, when a PR has and it looks good to me right now, I think I know that sometimes it takes at the moment a little bit to get the actual approve, but really feel free to ping approve us. Okay. That's what I can short term tell you. So Wonderful. if there's, yeah. But right now we're yeah. There's really a lot of lot of things are going on, and uh, sometimes you don't get automatically the approval look at the PR when it looks good to me. It's already there, and we're right now not always anymore in in the position to do looks good to me and approve in one go because it's just too much. Yeah. I hope that helps a little bit at least on how to get an approve, not on the general issue. <laughs> Usually what I do is uh, I hunt Roman or, or David down directly and, uh, and drag them over to GitHub kicking and screaming. 
yes, but we have more. <laughs> yes, but we have more approvers than David and me. Just to name a few, and and I think yeah, maybe it'd be maybe good, just because that's 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 the point of true. Uh, we have the owners file, and I'll just share the link with you, Chris. Maybe you can open it in a, for a second. Here we go. Oh yeah, of course. Maybe open the file for yeah. a moment and then. So I think the top three entries, David, Radic, and me, uh, we are definitely the people which can give the broadest the proofs without any issues. But there are also others uh, which are active, like, uh, yeah. Not so much Stu and Fabian, who are more on meta level, and also Daniel Belenke, which we should move to Emiratus. I don't think he minds because he moved on. But in fairness, I do respond to things. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, but but you you are not doing uh, deeper code reviews or anything at the moment, right? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so, but we have uh, we have Alona for networking. Daniel Hiller can be pinged, Chad, uh, Michael, and Igor. The, Igor is the last one, and zero S3, yeah. So, and if they, but yeah, you can just ping any one of the, these, even if they don't feel comfortable with approving a change, they will then just ping us, yeah. And also note there is a code reviewers list, but this code reviewers list is not exclusive. That is just the list of people which get assigned to PRs for reviewing by the system, but anyone can do code review. Great. Yeah, uh, just be vocal and, uh, yep. and you'll be noticed. Uh, yeah, I'm, yeah. I think I, I'm reviewing our, our GitHub events on a daily basis. Um, because I have a, a stack of about a thousand t-shirts that I need to get rid of. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm always looking for, uh, for new people to, uh, to introduce myself to and say hi, and good work and have a t-shirt. It's a nice starting point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it, uh, it's it's uh, getting reflected in our uh, in our incubation uh, process. Um, we've got uh, we've added all of our uh, our adopters to our front page recently. Um, so we've been trucking along for what five years now, with uh, without any uh, front page advertisement. So um, that leads me into our our next topic, actually. Um, ARM has uh, recently allowed us to advertise on uh, kubevert.io and add them to the adopters file. Thank you. That was a, a tough process to get through. Um, and since I'm talking about ARM, let me just, sorry, I have to talk for about five, 10 minutes, guys, about uh, uh, community stuff. Um, Roman. Uh, I was happy to announce uh, four seven Can you clarify uh, a little bit about the ARM? Uh, uh, so gonna when, have uh, ARM servers. Yes, uh, Kubevert will run on directly on ARM as well as run uh, um, multi architecture. So you can run uh, Kubevert on x eighty six sixty four and run ARM virtual machines on ARM hosts, or you can run pure ARM sixty four or run ARM64 with AMD64 virtual machines. It's pretty X86 sweet. X86 virtual machines? Yep. Wonderful. I'm interested in contribute on that. Uh, we have Michael Zhang, and I don't think Howard is with us this morning, or Michael Zhao. Um, and I think uh, 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 Howard uh, is not, not, not in this meeting, yeah. OK. I'm uh, happy to connect you with Howard, Andre. 
and yeah. to work on ARM64 stuff? Sure. Um, Stu and I just did a, a demo for uh, All Things Open in Raleigh, North Carolina, demonstrating uh, running Kubert and virtual machines on ARM64. I think it went well. Stu, you, went, you think it went well? Yes. <laughs> So it will be on a Raspberry Pi, right? Right. Um, that's, 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 yeah, that was the hardware oh. that we had access to. But uh, I just showed uh, really quick. I showed DevStack, DevStats for our event, our GitHub event tracking. This oh. is running on a very large ARM64 server, um, and that was uh, donated to the to. Uh, the overall um, uh, Kubernetes community, and uh, and Kubert has allowed a, a little bit to uh, gather a little bit of resources to gather uh, GitHub events and uh, show some show some charts. Uh, who like, is it, it's so awesome! Like I want it. Uh, <laughs> I just want it in my house to look at. <laughs> Who is providing the servers? Is Samsung or? Uh, I believe Marvel? it was. Stu, do you know the... anything about it? Who's Are providing the servers? Are we talking about the ARM machines or what? Yes. The, the, the ARM, ARM machine that, that, uh, that is running uh, dev stats. Oh, OK. I, yeah, I, I just know for our C I just know where Jack, our, Jack our machines for CI that. are coming from, and that's from Packet. So Josh Burkus runs that server, and it okay. is running. It's running in Equinix, uh, and uh, like it's impressive. It's got, uh, and the, I think the most impressive thing is is uh, how much how little power it consumes. So it's got massive core count, massive memory, low power, and it's cheap. So I can give you uh, specifics after the meeting. If you can give me a specifics, I appreciate that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, not a problem. I talk about it with Josh all the time. And Josh is, our, is the project sponsor at Red Hat. So I, I, every time you guys uh, fill in, these attendees right here, I had take this information over to him and give it and fill in a report. And we track how many users are in, uh, in the community meeting week to week. And I see we have 22 people with us today, but I don't see 22 entries here. <laughs> uh, how I, I'm, I'm calling you all out. <laughs> I have no access to this Word document. Oh, it should be available to all members of uh, of Kubert Dev. Make sure that the account you are using is subscribed to the Kubert Devel mailing list. Yes, and then you can access it. Yeah, and the mailing list is just a Google group. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, ARM uh, annual usage survey got sent out yesterday. Um, if you're using Kubert in any way, shape, or form, please fill out that survey. We need it for uh, our incubation process. Um, Another bullet point in incubation process is an official bug manager. Um, not looking for anybody to actually fix all the bugs, just uh, looking for somebody to make sure that uh, they're not sitting idle. Um, they're uh, to, to just like uh, to handhold handhold the the is GitHub issues through the process. Um, we are seeing really good results with a uh, with the bug scrub this year. Um, issues have sat for 
uh, two weeks in the past, and now we're seeing uh, issues get addressed within four days. So the bug scrubbing that we're doing during the community meeting has had a big effect. Uh, uh, other than that, there's no other updates on incubation. We're still looking for end users to be interviewed. Uh, we're kind of stuck here. Um, I've kind of I've data mined the, the mailing list and sent out about 30 emails to potential end users. Um, let's see. Um, Arm has agreed to, to be interviewed. Thank you for that. Um, but we, we need to get five. We need five and we have three so far. Um, as events, uh, I sent out an email regarding uh, some potential upcoming events. If anybody would like to uh, present Kubevert at one of those events, um, let me know. Uh, I'll get you a, an issue created in the community repo, and uh, we can track we can track the event uh, through that. Uh, can you, you elaborate a little bit about the interview? It so uh, we're looking for official end users. Um, you would be added to the adopters file, um, and advertised on kubert.io and the CNCF would contact you directly uh, for a 30 minute interview over Zoom. Um, I am not privy to what those questions are um, because of uh, undue influence. Um, what I do know is they just ask you what your, uh, what, how your interaction with the community is like. Um, whether we follow process, whether we, uh, uh, yeah, whether we're you inclusive. Like, you can include me then, okay? Oh, excellent, thank you. Uh, do you have a, an email address that uh, we can use to forward to the, our sponsor? And what's your company name also? I don't believe I caught that. This is my personal email, okay? And the desk is the company. Oh, I knew that. Sorry. <laughs> Double D. Why is this not copy and paste? Here we go. Got it. Thank you so much. I will uh, I'll forward this on to the CNCF. Um, the lady's name is Elena, and she is with Apple Computers. She's uh, Kubert's uh, sponsor with the CNCF. Mm -hmm. So she'll be in contact with you for scheduling and interviewing. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're getting desperate here. <laughs> we want to have this done Don't by worry. the end of the year. <laughs> I can put another uh, of the honors also to became five. <laughs> <laughs> and if uh, if you want to be added to the adopters file, uh, feel free to uh, to. Not create... yet. We are okay. finishing everything. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's fix everything to to put there. Okay. Sure. Uh, when well, you're ready, feel free to create the pull request. Better um, you do it than I do it, because then we can use the Git blame. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Seven forty-seven. Um, Philip has a question about a pull request. Um. Hi. Uh. Basically, uh, this is a, a old cost pull request. 
maybe uh, like a uh, half year old, and it's about uh, the Viho support in 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 Qbeard. And basically, uh, there is an implementation uh, implementation that is, I don't know, almost done. However, uh, uh, there is some networking project uh, uh, that I want to create, and uh, I want to some sort of revive this pull request. Basically, I have a very sim uh, similar like uh, topology, uh, but not probably using the, the obvious DPDK, but uh, replace it with, with FDIO's uh, BPP, the vector packet processing, so some sort of like software uh, router. And uh, uh, basically my question, my question is, I, um, I, I checked the pull request, I checked uh, all the discussions, and and seems like it's missing, um, uh, like it's missing the final kicking implementation. It's missing the end-to-end -end testing, and it's missing uh, some sort of the documentation and 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 uh, user guide. So basically, uh, my question is whether if uh, these pieces will be provided, whether there is a, like a high chance that um, uh, you can guys uh, approve it. Like I know. You have uh, you have like uh, code review it. I have to uh, I have to do all the uh, of the changes that uh, that you say that you probably wanted a little bit different. That's all right. However, uh, the question is if if I do all the steps, um, all the tests, all the documentation and stuff, whether this uh, could get merged or whether there is some sort of like. Uh, like problem, like, uh, I don't know, the Kwame doesn't support that and it's not somewhere in the comments or whether, whether you decided that you don't want to go with the VHOS or, or something like that. So I have, I want to get some like a broader, a broader confirmation that uh, in this way, I get uh, when, I, when I commit to, to make the effort uh, and, and process with all these steps, then, uh, that these uh, things uh, got merged. So uh, I, I don't know who to ask. So, I think it's some time. It's some time passed until we looked into this. And I think, for instance, David did a code review already on already on it, as far as I've seen. But I think it's hard to answer that right now here <laughs> yeah, you, yeah i understand yeah. that um, um I, I also know that some between testing was missing and that some packages yeah. needed to be installed and so on but a lot of, of things also changed in the meantime and i think we also have to look into that what it would exactly do and how it fits into the privilege privileges structure of the project can you can you bring this to Kubert Devil to the mailing list and maybe link the two or three existing PRs and we can then look into this again. So definitely yeah. not just go, as you, as you already said, do not immediately go away and code everything and then hope that we accept. Um, just But just give us a small heads up notice and what you just said here with a few links and we can look into this again, I think. Then we can. Yeah, th that would be great. Uh, yeah. uh, so you're going to write to Kubert Devil and then? Uh, sorry, can you repeat that? So I, you're going to write an email to Kubert Dev? Uh, yeah, uh, could you please uh, write me the the email or yeah, I had just what exactly? Uh, Chris, this would be a good question for you. You normally have the link immediately ready, right? <laughs> You're looking for the, the email address for the mailing list? Yeah, I'm just looking on our keyboard. There should be on keyboard.io directly permanent link to it, right? So the, the community page is a mess. <laughs> okay, perfect. yeah, then let's directly use the keyboard dev. So it's. I got it. I got it in the notes. Okay, yeah, also here. That's the link for you to click at in the chat. And behind it, there's the usual mailing list. Yeah, thank you. I, I'm definitely right there. 
Yeah. I have one. I have one. Uh, one comment about this. Yeah. Uh, so, I want also to mention this is not only now a technical issue in, in sense of supporting this. It's also if there is real need for it in in a broader community, because in general. Uh, this was uh, in previous projects include that are related to virtualization. This effort were dropped, like most of the effort to have digit, uh, user space uh, application on the node side to accelerate like vhost uh, were, were actually dropped at some point because the SROV hardware was started to be very cheap and very common and any uh, serious enterprise uh, solution will include them. So we need to also tackle the, the actual need here because it's questionable if this is this is really worth the effort to to keep it and maintain it. Uh, just one thing here and what, that was a really good point you made but I really think this is very useful especially for single node um, deployments. If you just have like a single node, DPDK would theoretically behave better. So that's like, from from my perspective at least, that's a positive thing for uh, this feature. Yeah, but this is I don't know if a single node is is, is like a common use case. It's a, it's one small use case, and uh, supporting the user space stuff is found. So I would suggest that we get the email on keyboard devil, maybe at your use case, which you have in mind, it's always helpful. Like, yeah, that, that definitely helps. All right, and it's starting to sound like, this is starting to sound like we need to have a, uh, a design document. I yeah, guess, but I, guess I, I let's wouldn't. Start with, let's start with the goal and uh, with, the, with the, as you said, the use case and the need and show that this, it's a very common need because the effort needed to support such a thing is, is pretty high. So it needs to have a value. So this is what I'm saying. It's not like if you were talking five years ago, this was not the case because then uh, SRV was not that common and it was really expensive. But now that it is so common, asking someone to just buy the, the correct hardware to have the correct uh, to have these uh, abilities, it's more common. So just need, you need just to start with uh, convincing that it is needed. Uh, okay, and, and uh, how I actually should, I don't know, persuade you that uh, it, it's it's common. I, I don't know. I can I can say like uh, why I. Need it in in the project and and stuff like that and uh, how I want to how I want to connect the things. However, uh, uh, how can I say that it's 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 common? I don't know. This, this so, is uh, yeah, I would say just, just start the, the conversation with your use case. That's fine. Right. And uh, with a few pointers of what we have, and there is already, for instance, we already have quite some documentation in the old PRs on how this needs to be configured. And we need to look into, so one aspect is definitely like Edward said, if this will then be used at all by more than one person. But another aspect is also uh, how difficult it would be for us to maintain it. What do we have to do to end and test it? How, so we need to get a feeling for what this, so, even if there are just a few people which make use of it, if it's pretty easy for us to maintain, so dragging it along with us, it may still be fine. But you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, to... yeah, I understand. Uh, uh, your effort to maintain it must be uh, must be on the other hand um, uh, weighted by the by the people using it, of course. Mm -hmm. right. and, so, so, and so even yeah. And even if if it turns out that it's too hard too hard for us to maintain it, we may still be able to look for maybe improving some hooks which we have for so that, that you can just do do it anyway without having core support. So just you, you know if there's a 
there are also other ways than if necessary. We will see. Um, I, I don't really understand what other ways you mean. However, okay, okay. I, I, I yeah. So for we 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 are we are yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I yeah, write, like with I hooks or there and, you can still and, do stuff. Yeah. And start with the use case and um, and also try to try to. Um, uh, try to write uh, what does to need to be maintained from your side. Maybe that works. All right. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Edward, are you also happy with that? Seems so. Okay. Uh, well, that takes us to uh, 7.58. Um, no time for bug scrub. So uh, I'm I'm gonna override uh, bug scrub this week and say uh, we'll do it next week, and I will return one minute back to everybody. So we'll end this call. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Um, have a good week, and we'll see you next week, same time, same place. Thank you. See you. Thank Thanks, you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.